hey YouTubers! So, uh, I was going through my um, subscription list and I have subscribed to a lot of really random people and one of them happens to be this really cool goth vlogger who um, has a lot of videos about goth related stuff, um, crafty stuff, cooking stuff, dancing stuff, a really nice mix. And she also talks about her paranormal experiences. And so this got me thinking, well, this is something that I've never really tackled on a, a vlog or a video or anything before, so... And I wasn't really sure if I wanted to because I know that, like, a lot of people have mixed feelings about the paranormal. A lot of people, they don't believe in the paranormal and that that's totally okay too. Um, and that, like, you know, everybody interprets their experiences differently where one person might interpret an experience to be really negative and almost demonic, somebody else might take a look at that same experience and be like, well, that was harmless, you know, what was to be feared. So, I mean, so it's a really, it's a really difficult concept to tackle, but I want to give it a try because I think it could be really interesting, and um, if you didn't find me through uh, the video response posted on her video about uh, her paranormal experiences, um, then, well, you can, I'll, I will put a link to her channel uh, in the description box that's down there somewhere. It's, it's somewhere. Okay, so, I have a list so I don't get totally off track because that's probably what's going to happen because there's a lot to talk about here. Basically, well, I, I mean, obviously, if I'm making a video about this, I do believe in the paranormal. Um, that means I believe in a variety of stuff. Um, I don't necessarily agree with all the terms that are always used to describe the paranormal, but, you know, I mean, like I said, everybody interprets it differently, so there's not much I can do about that. Um, to start off with, <clears throat> let's see, basically, I think the biggest reason for why I've ever had any experiences uh, kind of circles back to my mom, because Ever since she was very, very young, a very small child, she's been really sensitive to stuff um, like that. And not that anybody believed her, of course, but uh, when she was very small, like three or four years old, she used to live in this, um, this farmhouse. Uh, yeah, I believe it was the farmhouse. And uh, it was you know, out in the middle of nowhere in like rugged Minnesota, small town, with her three siblings and her parents. And uh, I believe this is when she still shared a room with her sister, and um, her parents' bedroom, my grandparents, uh, their bedrooms were connected by an adjoining closet, and uh, this closet door didn't close for some reason going into my mom's bedroom, so it was always open. And one night, my mom, my three-year, four-year-old mom, woke up and heard growling coming from the closet. Spooky, right? So. She looks into the closet in the dark, and there are these red eyes staring back at her. More than one set of red eyes, a couple sets of red eyes. There are wolves in the closet. My mom had never seen a wolf before. Three or four years old, there was no television in the, in the early 60s. Not where they live anyway. There were no wolves in that part. This is, you know, it's, it's agricultural Minnesota. There are, there are no wolves. Not really. Maybe up north, but not, not, not where we're from. My mom had never seen a wolf, much less a wolf with glowing red eyes. But that's what she saw and that's what she described. And uh, so you don't naturally you scream for your parents because you're three or four years old and you have no idea what the heck is in there. You think it's real. And uh, so, you know, parents come in, they turn on the light in the closet. There's nothing there. There's nothing there. But she saw them. She heard them. They were there. They snarled at her. Um, her, her next experience was in the same bedroom, and this one didn't have anything to do with the closet. In this one, she woke up in the middle of the night covered in snakes. We're talking small gardener snakes, um, uh, the brown the brown snakes that are commonly found in fields all over here. But um, beyond that, large snakes, pythons, boa constrictors, colorful poisonous snakes from like the Amazon. She'd never seen these things before, but she could describe them in active detail, like, oh, this snake had, like, red and yellow horizontal stripes, you know. And, I mean, you, you look these things up now, I mean, they're real snakes. But my mom's four-year-old self had never seen anything like that. 
the scariest thing to me was that she, to this day, now, she's in her 50s, to this day, she can still recall exactly the way they felt slithering on top of her and against her. And she's pretty terrified of snakes because of that, obviously. Ironically, she actually likes wolves. Very peculiar. But yeah, so ever since my mom was very young, she's, um, she's had, a uh, she's been sensitive to that kind of stuff. And I guess a lot of that right there, I mean, when you've got creepy snakes in your bed with you, and you swear to God they're real because you can feel them, but nobody else can see them. Uh, when you've got hellhounds in your closet, I mean, it's pretty indicative that something's going on. And um, her next big occurrence was when uh, she was in her early 20s, and her, younger, her youngest brother, Steve, was in a car accident and killed. And um, she was very, very upset, and she was drinking really heavily one night, sitting in her bedroom, and she was uh, yelling at God, basically, because, you know, she believed in that back then. She was yelling at God and saying things weren't fair, and she was really angry, and something slithered up alongside her bed on her wall. Some shadowy thing with red eyes, and it pretty much creeped the fuck out of her, and she started crying and said she was sorry, she didn't need to say anything, please go away, and, um, you know, she's had, um, but she claims to be a UFO, follow her home from work one night. It looked like a giant replica of the moon, apparently, but that could have easily been something possibly supernatural, too. There's, you know, no way to know for sure. But she's, she's had a lot of things happen to her. She's had a lot of experiences. And um, even to this day, there's still stuff that goes on. Um, uh, for me, it didn't really start until I was like, a teenager, I guess, but I think for a lot of people that's kind of how it does start, because I, I don't know why, maybe it's more turbulent time in your life and your emotions are all over so you're able to pick up on stuff, I, I don't really know. But for me it kind of started when I was a teenager and my grandmother died. And I was really close to her for the longest time, and when she was sick, you know, I kind of pulled away and stuff, and I mean, I regret that now, but, you know, it's like, I made her promise, you know, that she was going to be there for my high school graduation and that, you know, after I found out that she was really sick and she wasn't going to make it, I was like, well, you know, <clears throat> when you die, you know, can you come back and visit and give us a sign? And, you know, she said she would, but there was no way of knowing for certain if that was, that was going to be legit or not. But, um, after she died, about a week afterwards, I would smell her perfume and then one of the lights in the house would turn on. Just like a lamp, which it would just turn on. And uh, I wasn't the only one who had this experience. Um, my mom would smell her perfume a lot too, but we didn't have this in the house anywhere because she was the only one that wore it. And uh, so we, we would smell it and then the light would come on and then after a while the light would go off. And I mean, it was pretty obvious that she had come back to visit. And so, I mean, it was a really comforting feeling to know that you know, okay, well, obviously, there is something after you die, there is something left of you. Even if, you know, you can't really definitively define what it is, it was just still comforting to know that some part of her, of her psyche even, remained. And that there was energy there, and it was, I don't know, it was kind of a nice feeling. Um, it was after that that I started getting into, like, uh, this is gonna sound really horrible to a lot of people, but, uh, witchcraft? Yeah, I know, I know. Not the dark stuff. Um, I started off with Wicca, which I don't follow anymore. Um, I'm pretty eclectic now, I guess. I mean, I don't really do white witchcraft. I don't do black mat. I don't really believe that there is a color, I guess. I don't really believe in defining it because everybody's notion of right and wrong is different and good and evil are relative terms, but you know. So, I mean, I suppose I would put myself in the gray category. Like, I'm not going to like I mean, cursing is kind of a big deal, I suppose, but not many people I don't think are powerful to even pull it off, frankly. But, uh, I mean, if I had to sort of define where I would put myself on the alignment scale, I would put myself somewhere in the gray neutral zone, because while I would, I do primarily, like, um, mostly divinatory sort of things, um, if something really, really horrible happened to someone in my family, I would, and I wasn't able to get at the individual who inflicted this pain, 
I would think that a curse or a hex would be a viable form of punishment. Because I'm a vengeful person. If you fuck with me or someone I care about, I'm gonna get even. It's just the way I am. So, I mean, if I do this using magic or if I do this with my own fist, you know, it, the outcome's the same and I'm prepared for the consequences. I don't recommend doing this though if you don't if you haven't put some serious thought into it. But okay. Moving beyond that, I got into witchcraft and um my path kinda led me towards like Celtic ancestor worship and like working with like the Fae and like more magical entities, I suppose. And so like after kind of getting involved with that, you know, the typical fairy encounters would, would happen, like keys would disappear, shiny things would be moved around, um, if I had to look for something that was really important, I could never find it, and it was definitely not where I put it, but then as soon as I didn't need it anymore, it would turn up. And you know, these things happen normally for a lot of people anyway, but this was, it was massively reoccurring, like all the time. And it was like for the dumbest things, and it was, and I would see stuff out of the corner of my eye, like little creatures, and it's, I know this would scare the crap out of most people, but like, I knew what it was, and it wasn't anything more than annoying. But as soon as you like start paying attention to them and kind of give them what they want, then it stops, and that's kind of what happened. Um, so that was off and on for a while, and uh, I, I had a friend who had um, a ghost that was attached to her, and we would try to communicate with it every now and then. Um, she lived next to the cemetery in town, so I mean that was kind of a given. She was kind of open to that stuff, so I mean, it's really not surprising that something would attach itself to her because she was sympathetic. So I mean, there, there were things that would happen in her house, and they were never really scary, but you know, none of our other friends liked going to the cemetery ever because they knew the kind of stuff that went on there. And Yeah, so I mean, I mean I've had a lot of encounters and run-ins with stuff, so uh, I wasn't really surprised to find out that... <laughs> The laundry room slash back door of my mom's house is a portal, which basically means that stuff comes in and out and it moves around. Um, we didn't really discover this right when we moved in. Like it took a while for the activity to really get going, and that's probably because you know my mom being the sensitive, you know there was there was the energy, there was the opening, and they took it. But um, basically, what happens is there's a certain space somewhere and it kind of opens up like a, like a door. Kind of like a lot of people would say a Ouija board is a door, you know, to let stuff in and out. I mean, it's, it's a horrible analogy because a Ouija board doesn't actually work like that, but that's kind of the thing where stuff will just come and go. And so like after a while we would start hearing weird things coming from that part of the house. Um, at night there would be like footsteps and knocks and stuff slamming back there. And um, I think it was my mom who heard it first because her bedroom door is really close to that part of the house so she was in her room one night and she heard growling coming from outside her door and I mean we only have a cat we don't have any animals that would growl and so you know she got up and she checked it out and there was nothing there but then my brother heard it late one night too when he was on his way back something growled at him as he approached and uh, that was kind of creepy um after that uh there were like my mom would see a lot of shadows. I mean, she still does see shadow people in the house all the time, but uh, things would like walk past at night if she'd be like on her computer and she'd be like facing the door and it was dark or something. And she would see something like kind of move through that area of the house thinking maybe me or my brother were coming back, but there was no one there. Um, sometimes there would be footsteps coming towards that end of the house and then they would just vanish. So it's like stuff would like come out and stuff would go in and then they were gone basically. Um, the most current entity that has been hanging around is a black cat. Now, at my mom's house, she has her cat, which is like kind of a, she's kind of chubby, I guess, and she's calico, so she's got all the colors. And then my cat, which is a tiny, tiny black cat. And so for a while, my mom thought that the shadow cat that she was seeing was my cat, but she actually got a full on glimpse of this, this spirit cat uh, the other day. And it looks like a normal black cat, an adult cat, just full on, and it plays with stuff in the kitchen at night, like it'll knock things over and chase them around. And she knows it's not any of the actual cats because they're both in bed with her. So we have a spirit cat that's been hanging around and like, I mean, I don't know if it's attracted to the cats that are currently there, I have no idea, but it hasn't really done anything bad. Um, 
The most activity that I've experienced lately though is at my boyfriend's house. Um, him and his family moved up here from Chicago about, well let's see, he was in middle school, we're out of high school now, so maybe like 10 or so years ago I guess. And they got the house from this guy who built it himself, he was a cop, and there was like a lot of really shady stuff that, you know, he didn't want to talk about at the house. Like they used to run a daycare or whatever, and that abruptly stopped after a while, and then he sold the house. And so they don't know if something really weird happened there, but um, there's definitely something in that house, like, if you're downstairs in the basement, which is, uh, it's like, I guess it's kind of like a split level. You have like the main floor up above the stairs with the kitchen and the living room. And downstairs, it's like another living room. And like, so there's, they've got their sectional, their giant TV down there. And then there's like the laundry room and another bathroom and my boyfriend's bedroom. So when you're downstairs and it's late at night or there's no one home and you're, you're just downstairs minding your own business, you'll hear footsteps upstairs, loud, stomping, running footsteps. And it'll, it'll like start in like his mom's bedroom upstairs, which is right above his, and it'll go down the hallway and around the living room and around the kitchen. The scariest stuff is like when you're like, when you're in bed or you're out in the hallway and you hear these footsteps that they start in one room and you can hear them go all the way through the house. Then you hear the footsteps come down the stairs and stop outside the basement door. That's creepy because you don't know if there's actually somebody there. You don't know if it's like some entity or, you know, but anyway, there's a lot of footsteps. Um, he's had stuff in his room move. Um, usually the, the weirdest things happen when I'm not there. Like um, something will like jump on him in the middle of the night and wake him out of a dead sleep. And then when he sits up, you know, there's nothing there. Um, his mom uh, will see a shadow man standing in the doorway every now and then, but that, that has another story. Um, and there was one time she told me about that she was taking a nap on the couch upstairs in the living room. And um, she was half awake and she, um, she, heard, she heard a girl's voice and she thought it was me for some reason. So she looked up from the couch over to this area, um, kind of like where the stairs start to go downstairs right outside the kitchen there's like this railing kind of and you can like look down over it at the stairs and stuff and there was this girl standing there and she in her sleep fogged mind thought it was me but so she kind of just like you know put her head back down and then she heard a man's voice from the kitchen say don't bother her she's sleeping and it was just like no one was home and it's like that's yeah i don't know the thing with the shadow man that stands in her doorway, though, um, is something that she thinks came with them from Chicago because the house that they lived in before had um, some really bizarre stuff to it. Like there was a secret room that was cemented in that had like kids' toys in it, and there's really weird stuff. But like the entities in their house have never been like really harmful, particularly. I mean, they've been really obnoxious, but they've never been harmful. Like, I mean, in all my experiences, and those of the people that I know have never been harmed by anything. I mean, they've been scared shitless, no doubt, but they've never been harmed. And so, like, I've come to the conclusion that I have never personally come across a demonic entity. Like, I know my boyfriend has because he's seen and knows of really weird, strange... He's he's a sensitive as well, I believe, and he's, he's uh, had a lot of strange things happen to him. I don't know if anything is demonic or not. I mean, I, it's hard to say because a demon implies a Okay, my apologies. My camera ran out of time and completely stopped recording and that was obnoxious. Okay, so, <clears throat> in summary, I do not know if any of the entities that I or anyone else I know has come, have come across are demonic. Uh, I know that some of them are human spirits, some of them are not human spirits. Um, if you would like a video that um, where I talk about my feelings on how to categorize the paranormal, if you find that something like that would be interesting, hey, let me know because I have a lot of my own really um, fascinating ideas, I suppose, because like, you know, I'm, I'm really fascinated by all things paranormal. I'm really fascinated by spirits. I've done a lot of reading um, and 
regarding shadow people and their possible origins and intentions. Um, I know a fair amount about uh, modern interactions with the Fae. Uh, so I mean, if you're interested and, and you even want to know more about like my weird, goofy, spiritual, witchy path, I'm more than happy to talk about it if you guys are interested. Uh, so yeah, in retrospect, um, lots of crazy stuff. Yeah, none of it terribly bad, in my opinion. Um, so I'm, like I said, I'm posting this video as a video response to Kaz Loves Bats, a video about her ghostly encounters. Uh, I totally encourage you to do the same if you want to make a video about, like, the paranormal and your experiences. I mean, I think it would be really fun if we had, like, this whole list of videos where everybody talks about their stuff. So, um... Yeah, I totally want to hear what you guys think about um, her stories and my stories. Um, if you have anything else to contribute, I'd be more than happy to hear it. So, um, yeah, uh, I hope this didn't scare you at all. I mean, I didn't really go into any graphic detail about any of my experiences at all. So, um, you should probably be okay. But, uh, yeah. So, uh, anyway. Uh, stay sharp, kids, and I'll sleep with the light on, huh?